Did you ever watch James and the Giant Peach when you were a kid? Nope. No? Nope. Okay, well, it was a Tim Burton movie that was clay animated, and it told the story, the classic story of James and the Giant Peach. Uh, if you Have you ever read, uh, heard the story of James and the Giant Peach? I think I read it in elementary school, but I barely remember it. Okay, well, the the movie strongly differs from the uh, from the source material. The source material, there's several things that are actually a lot more loopy. There's some main characters that are there. And are not, and aren't present in this. Um, I'd say the biggest thing is the the sharks in the book are replaced with a gigantic, evil mechanical shark in this one. And then mm-hmm. there's a, and then of course there's a, um, the cloud people are completely gone. Uh, who were in the 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 book? who the centipede felt he had to curse at because he didn't think that they would hear him. Hmm. And uh, instead, it, there there's several things in this that are very weird. It's a very trippy movie. But I watched it as a kid, and I liked it. And it also had some pretty scary moments in it, too. But anyway, the Nostalgia Critic did a video on this, and the Nostalgia Critic has... Let's call this a love-hate relationship with Tim Burton. As in, he loves Tim Burton's art style. He loves it. The, his his favorite Batman movie is the first Tim Burton Batman movie. Yeah. Also, he loves Beetlejuice. He, lo- he, he loves a lot of the stuff that Tim Burton has done. But he said this before, and he said it again. Tim Burton sometimes goes so far off the rails that he often gets lost up his own asshole. In which, seeing the Alice movies, I can understand that. Yeah, I guess so. And also seeing um, seeing certain other films, yeah, he can get lost up his own ass. But for every... But I'll say this. Sweeney Todd, his version of Sweeney Todd, awesome. Yeah. Even though Johnny Depp was the lead. <laughs> I, actually, I don't, I don't mind cares? that. <laughs> I don't mind that. He was he was actually really good, um, but yeah, <clears throat> uh, the whole thing is just like judging something like James and the Giant Peach. I mean, this came back this came out back in the nineties, and I remember watching this. We actually went to the theater and watched this. Uh, me and uh, I think it was like me and uh, several ki- uh, several kids who actually uh, aced the math test. That was like our reward for like the end of the year. We got to go to the movie theater and watch James and the Giant Peach if we aced that test. And me and several others did, and uh, we we went, and it was awesome. But, all right. Anyway, uh, we have the uh, Nostalgia Critic uh, video up here. Let's get it on screen, and let's see what the dear old critic has got to say. We are live at a press conference here in Chicago, Illinois, where we hear that any minute, the nostalgia critic is going to make a public appearance addressing his last video. For those who are unaware, the nostalgia critic posted a Let's Play of Bart's Nightmare last week, which was considered by many to be so horrendously unfunny that they'd rather shove a needle factory up their scrotums. Ah, and here is the nostalgia critic preparing to explain his actions. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm the nostalgia critic. They allowed me a short amount of time out of the Internet Space Penitentiary. A little surprised to see that place actually existed, but apparently it's right next to me. Stay home for the ugly. So, uh, they allowed me a short time out to answer your questions addressing the video I did last week. Ah, uh, yes. How does it feel to know that you've made the absolute worst Let's Play to ever be put on the Internet? I disagree. That is not the worst Let's Play I've ever seen. There were parts of that video that were actually pretty funny. It's just he was trying way too hard to be the AVGN. Mm. Um, but it is not the worst Let's Play I've ever seen. By a long shot. By a long shot. It's probably one of mine. No, yours <laughs> yours actually are entertaining. But anyway, let's... Uh, let's <clears throat> here we go. Bad. Definitely uh, bad. Some more funny videos and I had a robber break into my house, kill my wife, and eat my children. Uh, he's not as bad as you. 
Thank you for that. And uh, I am very sorry for your words. Don't give me your pity. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> Melvin, the brother of the Joker, emo Jones, this recent Let's Play, Nazi Germany. That is all. Okay, uh, if we could keep the questions to actual questions, uh, that'd be fantastic. Uh, yeah. How do you account for this travesty among the wormholes? Look, um, when everything is said and done, at the end of the day, I just made a bad video. <gasps> Inexcusable! Your best is not better, Mr. McCrick! Sure, you tried something new, it didn't work, it bombed like mad, and now you deserve to give your fans something better! I mean, I like it, I don't agree with you, but you owe your fans something better! Well, I'll, I'll tell Chester you Chester A. Bum, I miss him. Why do I do a positive review? Ah, oh, yes, how can I not forget the awkwardly written yet structurally confusing masterpiece that is James and the Giant Peach? Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's not like the film did poorly at the box office but got a surprising cult following over the years. Or that the critical reaction at the time was lukewarm at best, but recently it's being declared as a timeless classic. <laughs> it's not like my need to please the masses is going to affect my opinion in any conceivable way. I'm just going to praise it for the wonderful family rock that it is. Really? Critic, come so on, be honest. Know, the film is based on the book by Willy Wonka author Roald Dahl and directed by famous stop motion director Henry Selick, who also directed The Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, okay. Never mind. Thought it was Tim Burton. See, stop motion has clearly gotten better. Good God, they look like actual fucking people. Look, that cloud looks like a camel, and that one over there looks like a train engine, and that one looks like a crappy CGI effect. I mean, a good CGI effect. <laughs> and can you see the tallest building in the world? I see it. That's where we're going. Tommy and those clouds was perfect. I mean, they formed the Empire State Building just as they tell them they're about to go to the Empire State Building. I wish the clouds in my neighborhood were that convenient. <laughs> if only there was a way I could avoid the Chicago traffic. Take the L train. Of course, that's a great idea. Oh, but which one goes to the loop? <clears throat> of course, how stupid of me. Oh, but what if I want to keep my options open? That's amazingly helpful! Thanks, incredibly convenient <laughs> passing pile of clouds! You're welcome. Map quest can suck it. So everything seems <laughs> nice. absolutely peachy for James and his angelic parents. But then things suddenly, and I do mean suddenly, go very bright. Then, one day, a terrible thing happened. An angry rhinoceros appeared out of nowhere. Whoa! Are you alright? Yeah, I just almost spilled my drink. Damn. Up his poor mother and father. A rhinoceros ate his mother and father. An angry rhinoceros appeared out of nowhere and gobbled up his poor mother and father. <laughs> Can you imagine if one of the Disney movies did that? Look, sis. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. And then the rhino ate him up. Hakuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. How do you think that go over? Probably better. So, of course, now he has to live with his evil aunts. Yeah. How come the kindest parents in the world always have the most dick-ass relatives? Look, look, lollygagging in dreamland. 
when there's so much work to do. Weeds to pull, wood to chop. Work, 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 work. Okay, I think this calls for another. That one on the left, Spiker on the left, is actually. Happy New Year, look at Christmas. look at her eyes. Look at her freaking eyes. They're almost pitch black. Yep. God, that's terrifying. Oh. Your resolutions come true, and don't forget to. Yeah. <laughs> so this is Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker. You know, when you name your kids that, aren't you just begging for them to turn out like this? They're played by British comedians Joanna Lumley and Miriam Markle. And in keeping with England tradition, they give the best British confidence build-up they can muster. Get these stupid dreams out of your head and get back to work! He never even saw that rhino coming. That rhino! And the beast will get you too! <laughs> now in any other movie, I'd say these two were as strongly constructed as a bomb shelter made out of popsicle sticks, but in this movie, it works. Because... I really want you to like me right now. So as James gets back to work, 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 he can't help but hum a merry little tune. My name is James. That's what mother called me. Wow, what horrible lyrics. What a planned tune. What totally forgettable melody. This can only be the work of... Oh. <laughs> That's right. Randy, Randy friggin' Newman, Newman wrote, wrote these songs. songs. Oh, oh, and just like... Just like... <laughs> sorry, sorry, I have to do this. My name is James. That's what my dad called me. <laughs> and I'm in a giant peach. Then I'm flying across the ocean. Sorry. Sorry. I wish I this was alcohol. I had to do it. I had to do it. All right, here we go. Back at it. Like his other work, it's lame, annoying, repetitive, unoriginal, inspiring, charming, wonderful piece of music that I expect from such a musical genius. <laughs> I mean, how can you not love such emotionally packed lyrics like, My name is James. That's what other calls me. My name is James. So it's always there. That's ingenious inside, isn't it? I mean, here I thought James, as in James and the Giant Peach, was referring to somebody else. Nope, this song points out that it's the James right in front of us and not a James in another town or country. And the fact that he explains it's his mother that named him is also very important. Because we oh, yeah, the spider. The mistake of thinking his father named him. But no, this incredibly crucial lyric points out that it was, in fact, his mother. <laughs> I wonder what other incredible insight they're going to give us. Sometimes I forget when I'm lonely or afraid. Then I'll go inside my head and look for change. explains itself, I don't have to explain it for you. So as James is admiring what a beautiful set out it is today, he suddenly comes across the late Pete Pop, playing what looks like a time-traveling Captain Crunch. Oh, don't be frightened, James. I mean, you know, how do you know my name? I know more than just your name. I know your pen size, too. Just let me have that! Just let me have that! So he gives him a bag of kryptonite and pasta that he claims can make all his dreams come true. But what are they exactly? One thousand long, slimy crocodile tongues, boiled in the skull of a dead witch for twenty days and twenty nights. And the fingers of a young monkey, the gizzard of a pig, the beak of a parrot, and three spoonfuls of sugar. And a cute lunch in a pear tree. Damn. The only downside is he trips and lets it fly all over the place. <laughs> the two ants are angry, of course, because that's the one note they've been given. When they come across an amazing discovery. Look, a peach! There, on that branch! Why, that old tree's never had so much as a blossom on it, let alone a moon. Well, I'll be blown. I'm good. I'm good. 
<laughs> so the peach rolls out to the Atlantic Ocean, where it appears all they have to do is ride it all the way to New York City. I'll get us there. Sure, I sailed all the high seas. But they have to look out for a giant mechanical shark ship. Oh, don't act like I've never seen it. Floats to the surface and tries to catch them. Incoming! You do our hunting and farming. <laughs> but James thinks up a pretty creative idea by groping all the seagulls he can find and using them to fly away. <laughs> and if you're wondering where that giant harpooning metal shark came from or what his story was, good for you. <laughs> so as they start eating part of the peach because they're hungry, all the bugs decide to eat many strange and scrumptious dishes in my time. Really? We're singing a song about eating the goddamn peach. These foods are rare beyond compare. Some right out of reach. But there's no doubt I'm without a million plates of each. I mean, not that I have a problem with them singing about this at all. I'm sure this does not the story and give insight into the characters. I'm just a little curious what other similar musical numbers they turned down to fit this one in. Such important songs like The Sky is Blue, My Tongue is in My Mouth, Let's Make Poo, and God knows what else. God, can you imagine what this movie would be like without these essential Randy Newman songs? No, but God, I'm trying to. So as the spider starts to tuck James to sleep, or is she planning to eat him, he finds out that she much prefers a life of being I think this monkey likes to your friends, don't you? I would not know. They were great friends too. The others are not. If you just let them. No. It is in their nature to appear. This I cannot change. Wait, when in any of the previous scenes did it indicate that they were afraid of her? Or that she kept her distance? Or hell, even that she was quiet? She interacts with them, dances with them. She even sings them a Randy song. So where's this sudden loner story arc coming from? Yeah, all right. Yeah, I was trying to reposition. In the middle of the night, I apologize. So James goes to sleep and has a dream that he's in Monty Python's flying circus. <laughs> You, sir, are an ass. They tell the little boy, fascinating parents don't bring him much joy than twins. But it turns out the centipede led them in the wrong direction, and now they're in the Antarctic. 
So they go underwater to see if they can find a compass to lead the Arctic, the right but close they enough. They come across several pirate ships, including one that has the statues of its ants in it. I don't get it. Eh. When they suddenly come across skeleton pirates, one of them played by Jack Skeleton. Was this an incredibly clever cameo? Or was Henry selling just too cheap to make other puppets? Either way, it's pretty cool. Listen, fellas, I got a long history of that problem. Now, tell me what you know about Christmas Land. But James and the Spider come to save him, just making up the law of underwater physics as they go, and manage to get the compass. And since I am dead, I can take off my head. Thank goodness, you're all right. Mr. Sempton, would you please do us the honor of navigating us out of this ice box? Seeing how you got us into this ice box. You said it. Yeah. So just as you're wondering if those birds ever need to eat or sleep, we see James come across a rather touching musical moment. Uh the grasshopper. No. Well that's nice. It's a very genuine moment. An enchanted musical scene that doesn't need to succumb to the typical Randy Newman formula. Just look on where No man! Yep. No one! <laughs> Actually, certain centipedes are known for hunting and killing spiders. Yeah. By the way, if you're wondering what all of those things flying around in the background are, guess what? Never explained. But that's not a bad thing, no. It makes about as much sense as, no, I don't know, an unexplained giant rhinoceros killing some middle-aged people. But that works in a way I can't possibly explain at all. It still works. It still works. So just when it looks like they finally made it to their destination, they come across a rather unfriendly disease. <laughs> you chose a rhinoceros. <laughs> hey, Peachy. 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 <laughs> come in to save the day. The city can't believe they're up. Gotcha. So pull the two ants up and wrap them up in wind. No doubt suffocating them to death. I love how the police and officer all this time is like, yeah, I'm going to allow this. Why not? So everybody brings out the confetti they've been holding on to for God knows what reason, and James becomes a hero telling all the kids on the block his taste. Dinner is 
and then an exciting unexplained anti-climax with a rhino. Yeah. So is it for me? No, but I can see why it has an audience. The stuff that's neat is still pretty neat, and there's a lot of things in the movie that can be considered pretty impressive. So I guess I can't really fault people for enjoying something that does give way to a lot of imaginative scenarios. It may be flawed, but I think we all know that you're gonna get a great big dose of something really great. And that's all I gotta say about that. There. Have I restored anything in your guys' eyes? He says he didn't like the movie! Kill him! Damn. That movie seems fucking weird. It is. It's trippy as hell. And kind of boring. <laughs> well, they cut out a lot of the stuff that I... Doug cut out a lot of the stuff that actually is pretty engaging. The action... Like, for instance, the action scene that took place underwater, there was a lot there that they didn't show. Oh. And that's actually, to me, probably the highlight of the film because the colors, the characters that you come across, including all of the different uh, ghost pirates that are down there... Uh, you know, you saw the one that looked like Jack Skellington. You saw the big one with the axe. There were several others that actually had their own personality, and it was actually really good. Okay. But, and also, uh, and also, there's moments of tension, uh, like the one, like the the moment with the shark, the moment with the giant mechanical shark. There's there's certain uh, parts of that scene that are actually pretty intense, but um, overall. The songs, I agree with Doug. They are forgettable. I remember like a few lyrics, and that's it. Um, From the lyrics, it sounds like they're nonsensical too. Kind it's of, like they're which, pointless. Well, that's that's Randy Newman. He's like, no man. Yeah. Night. My name is Randy Newman. No man. Five chord and I think nonsensical shit. Yeah, it's Randy. That's that's it. Jesus. The only song I will, the only soundtrack I will say he actually did a pretty good job with was the Princess and the Frog. He did a lot of the music for that, uh, and he wrote probably my favorite tracks, uh, like almost there, and uh, and um, uh, what's it, uh, down in New Orleans. So I haven't seen that movie yet. Oh, dude, it's it's a banger. I love that friggin' movie, but. Honestly, man, I liked this a lot as a kid. As an adult, I, you know, I've had moments where I've pretty much tried to dissect it in my mind, and I've just been like, I still like this. It's still there's still problems, but I still like it. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect, and it shouldn't have to strive to be perfect. It's it's a movie. It's <laughs> all it has to do is just exist. You know. Yeah, I guess so. But, yeah. I I got it wrong that it was Tim Burton who directed it, but it turns out it's Tim Burton who produced it. Ah. So, yeah. yeah. And was the head of production design and all that. But, yeah. I... I gotta say, when I watched this as a kid, my favorite character was probably Centipede, just because of how, uh... Because of how, uh, like overconfident he was in certain aspects and he made mistakes but made up for them and uh it overall dude it's just a, a fun movie well at least for me as a kid it was now as an adult I'd probably look at it with a little bit more stupor and just be like eh eh just, 
a little bit less stupor, I should say, and just be like, eh, that could that could be cut, that could be cut. I'd have done this different. I'd have kept that from the book. One thing they didn't keep from the book that actually, well, the spider that that there's one thing that Doug didn't touch on in this either. The spider was actually the spider a spider that James saved during the first part of the film. You actually saw uh, when James set out the little candle for his, uh, you know, uh, set out the little candle during his song, a little spider was crawling there on his thing. Turns out that was the spider. Hmm. And turns out she just ate one of the, uh, one of the green things and it made her a gi- and it made her giant. Hmm. And it, it, it's, there's a lot there that they cut out. There, a lot of stuff they could have put in from the book that would have actually made the story flow a lot better. And they couldn't, and they didn't have to use songs. They wouldn't have had to have used songs to convey that. But eh, it is what it is. I mean, it's it's still a decent flick, and I and I can recommend it for anyone who's interested in animation and sort of nonsensical, silly storytelling. Go for it. I know it's not for everybody, though. I don't uh, know. So yeah, that was. The Nostalgia Critics reaction or uh, review to James and the Giant Peach. Uh, this was our reaction to it. If you want to see the original video and check out more Nostalgia Critic, as always, links are in the description down below. And as always, if you want to see more of us, we have a Patreon, we have a Discord. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like. And until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. And we will see you all in the next one. Peace out. Later.